How can we present the latest scientific views on the nature of the universe without God? And this please understand that I'm not making my own personal speculations, nor am I often inventing any new physics of my own. I'm simply giving a philosophical interpretation to our current best understanding in physics and cosmology. Since the 1980s now, reputable cosmologists have published papers, including Stephen Hawking, and, uh, published papers in reputable scientific journals proposing scenarios by which the universe could have come about naturally. One plausible mechanism is a well-established process called quantum tunneling. It's what's behind the device called the, the uh, quantum tunneling uh, microscope. It's a very well-established phenomenon that's been known for 50 years. It's responsible for the, for the, uh, decay, the alpha decay of nuclei, and without quantum tunneling, uh, the sun wouldn't be giving the energy that uh, it has and we wouldn't exist. So we know quantum tunneling, again, is one of these fundamental processes. Now, our universe could have come from a prior uh, state of complete chaos just by tunneling from it, uh, or possibly yeah, through that region of chaos from a, an earlier universe. Now, in, in my 2006 book, The Comprehensible Cosmos, which unfortunately is not for sale, not, couldn't sell all my books here. Uh, you'll find the scenario worked out completely mathematically. Again, not my invention, it's just, I just worked out uh, what other people have published. Uh, I give the references. Uh, it's all well-known physics. I've, I've been able to uh, just describe it using a mathematical level uh, of just, and it's accessible to anyone who's studied undergraduate math and, and physics. So you could take a look at that if you've had that background. Now, while we can't prove that the universe came into being in this exact way, the fact that such a scenario for the natural origin of the universe can be fully formulated, consistent with all we know about physics and cosmology, shows that we are not required to introduce God or any other supernatural element to explain the existence of the universe. Now, at this point, I'm often asked, what about the laws of physics? Where did they come from? Now, this also requires some explanation, because the laws of physics are not what most people think they are, even what most physicists think they are. The laws of physics uh, they're, they're, are not rules of, for the behavior of matter handed down by God or somehow built into the structure of the universe. The laws of physics are human inventions. They are ingredients of mathematical models that physicists use to describe observations and measurements. Now, what I'm talking about here is not postmodernism. The laws are not arbitrary. They must agree with observations. Now, in the 20th century, physicists discovered that virtually all of the basic laws of physics follow from one simple rule. Any mathematical model you write down to describe some observation cannot depend on the point of view of the observer. The model must contain certain symmetries so that no particular observer is singled out as special. Provision is made for these symmetries to be spontaneously, that is accidentally, broken. That all started back in 1916 when a mathematician named Emmy Goethe proved a theorem uh, that the most important laws of physics, which are conservation of energy, conservation of momentum, conservation of angular momentum, must appear automatically in any model that does not depend on any special time, position, or direction of space. In space time. We require that our models must be the same now as they were 13 billion years ago, and will be the same 13 billion years in the future. Require they, we require that they must be the same inside the nucleus or an atom on Earth as they are 13 million light years away in an atom in an ancient galaxy. We require that they are the same in Moscow as they are in Melbourne, which have different uh, definitions above. <laughs> when we extend uh, this principle to four dimensional space time, we find that Einstein's special relativity, the special theory of relativity, theory follows from just requiring no special direction 
in space-time, rotational invariance in space-time. General, uh, the general theory of relativity also was based on space-time symmetries. Then early in the 20th century, physicists extended these ideas to the abstract space they used to describe the quantum states of the system. They call this principle gauge symmetry. From gauge symmetry, they were able to derive all the equations of electromagnetism, including Maxwell's equations. They just follow from that one simple principle. Uh, in, in 1970, uh, this, had, this theory developed uh, uh, to the basic model that we call the standard model of particles and fields. Now, I'm oversimplifying the physicists in the audience will, will complain about this characterization, but this is basically uh, the way it's happened. Now, in the standard model, all the matter that composes the stars and planets in the visible universe is composed of just three fundamental particles, the electron, the two kinds of quarks we call up and down. Since then, the standard model has successfully described all observations made at accelerators and with telescopes. That's 40 years now. The standard model provides us with the basic physics of the universe back to when it was only a trillionth of a second old. Now, now that the Large Hadron Collider has gone into operation in Geneva, we may soon hear the first violations of the standard model in 40 years. At least that's what physicists hope, because uh, physics has really been stifled by the lack of empirical anomalies to guide us to the next level of understanding. Now, at this point, the stubborn theist might still ask, where does all this symmetry come from? The answer is simple came from nothing. Now I equate nothing to the total chaos uh, that we project existed uh, just before the Big Bang. If something has no structure, which it would have if there was a total chaos, now it's as much nothing as nothing can be, or now you can redefine nothing any other way. Than something that has no structure, has no, pr no properties, no anything. So that's what I call So the symmetries of the universe are really just what they should have been if they came from nothing. It follows that the laws of physics are just what they should be if they came from nothing. And it also means that the laws of physics are just what they should be if there is no God. One more final point on cosmology. I'm often asked why there is something rather than nothing. I usually retort, why is it uh, why isn't there nothing rather than something? As a Nobel Prize winning physicist Frank Wilczek has said, nothing is unstable. In, in physics, the natural direction, as I talked about earlier, the phase transitions is from simplicity to complexity. Again, an example of, of water going from water vapor to uh, to ice. You go from simplicity to complexity, from higher symmetry to lower symmetry. And that's the natural process. And nothing is as symmetric as anything can be, so moving from nothing to something is a natural process, natural phase transition that you would expect to happen. 